Listen, it was, it was uh, great to be able to get back on the field uh, with players. Um, what a good group, man. These guys, it wasn't as big a group as we normally have for the rookie minicamp, but boy, do they uh, work hard and um, really did everything we asked them to do. And uh, Brett's brought some good talent in here. I do where we could have a good camp. We did a lot of seven on seven. Uh, we were able to hit the red zone today and um, seven on seven. Uh, didn't have enough linemen to go through um, an ac actual team period, but uh, what we got done uh, was tremendous. And uh, uh, th these guys absorbed it, which was, uh, it was a real pleasure to coach them. And um, again, I just appreciate the, you know, the quality of the player and their, their effort as they put, as they got into this. Anyways, with that time's yours. <clears throat> go first to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Hey, Herbie. You mentioned um, the lack of, uh, of your, the opportunity to have the players back here uh, for rookie mini camp. And when you compare it to last year without a rookie mini camp, what is, how much of an advantage does this year's draft class have, you know, as far as the acclimation and learning process compared to last year? And I have another question after this. <laughs> Yeah, so listen, I, I just think uh, you, you want to go into training camp uh, with an understanding. So of the new things that you're able to study and, and experiment with, uh, you know, uh, as coaches and then on the field as players um, uh, to make yourself better uh, this next year. So uh, that's what this did. This gave them an opportunity now to hit phase two when the veterans are here uh, with an understanding of, of a base understanding of what's going on. They're going to have to strap it on when the, when the veterans get in, because it, it's gone fast. We're already four installs into, into it. Uh, and they're going to have to catch up and the number of plays and all those things are going to have to catch up, but at least they have a foundation. Um, and, and then I'd say the same thing for the veterans when uh, they're able to get on the field. Now they've, they've done this in the classroom. Now, now it's an opportunity to get out and, and walk through it uh, and then jog through it and then run it. And, uh, those steps become uh, important um, when, when, you know, when you go into training camp. It gives you an opportunity to be better. Now, Nick Bolton, your second-round draft pick, obviously he doesn't have pads on yet, but how much does he come as advertised from what you've seen over the last three days? Yeah, I'll tell you. Now, he, he had a nice interception today, actually, um, right, right in the red zone. So um, he's, uh, he's Tiger tough, man. I mean, he's, he's out there battling, and, and you have to love it. He – He's got great instincts. He's very intelligent. Did a nice job. Now we're in shorts, and he's a he's a linebacker. So I mean, uh, I, I know he probably can't wait till we start hitting and that. But for this drill, for the drills here, he sure did a nice job. <clears throat> Haley Lewis, go ahead, Haley. Hey, coach. Just wanted to follow up on what Herbie was saying about how beneficial it was to have the players actually on the field this year versus virtual and kind of what, what was the benefit of that this year versus last? Yeah. So again, just uh, the fact that you have an opportunity, go to the next phase. So they'll start phase two tomorrow. There's not a whole lot of rest here. They get, get to rest up and get off their feet this afternoon, but then they're right back at it. Uh, tomorrow. And then listen, tomorrow phase two is mostly lifting and, and, and doing that, but uh, there's a little bit on, on the field work where you can kind of go through some things uh, uh, shortly. I mean, they're, they're short. It's a short day on the field, uh, but <clears throat> for, for the young guys, just getting uh, they're they're now going to get acclimated to the four installs that the offense has had and the six installs that the defense has had and so on. They're, they're going to, they're going to get all of that. They're going to have to kind of catch up to it. And then they'll get some extra time The rookie that the rookies get. They get extra time uh, tomorrow and they'll get a little bit more uh, coaching uh, virtually there that um, and get caught up mentally at least. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy. Um, I wanted right. to ask you about a, a guy like New Lucas Niang who's coming back off of um, the opt-out, obviously. Um, there's probably some challenges involved for him, but are there any benefits for a guy in his situation that you see coming back, maybe sitting out that last year? And uh, Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, the pluses are he was able to uh, keep himself COVID free, and uh, uh, but most of our guys did. So, I, I mean, my credit goes out to everybody that was involved with that. But um, he... he um, 
you know, he's done, he's done a nice job in this camp, Adam. I mean, he, he's, he's a, he's a big man, like really a big man that has these beautiful feet. So I look forward to getting him back in the pads and training camp and moving around and, <clears throat> and doing uh, uh, what offensive linemen do the real football part of it. Um, but till then this gives him a chance to get acclimated uh, uh, mentally and physically as he goes forward. So I, I think that's a, it's a good lead up for him. In his case, did you see any rust this weekend? Could you tell, hey, this is a guy who's been out of football for a year? And if you could, how did you see that? Well, you can tell he's worked. The, the thing with this, Adam, is um, there wasn't – there was no offense versus defense uh, with, the, with the lines. So we didn't have one-on-ones or any of that, and, and he had done all that during training camp. So uh, I, like all players, it's going to be a – that will be a challenge down the road for him to get back into that. But for right now – he looked, he looked tremendous for what we were doing. Good recall there. Let's go next to Harold Koontz. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Andy, I want to ask you about Cornell Powell, uh, specifically along with Trey Smith. I noticed that you took some extra time looking at them, kind of exchanged a little word with them while they're going through reps. I'm just curious, what do you kind of say to them to try to call them down? Because they always kind of mention like, well, that's a, that's a Hall of Fame coach there. You know, it's a little bit. I wouldn't say intimidating, but it's a little bit of a mesmerizing thing for them to say. What do you say to them to kind of calm them down and get them going? And what do you, what are you impressed by them both? Yeah. I mean, listen, both of them just want to get better. Um, and, and Mike Kafka does a great job with that. I mean, he, he spends a ton of time with those guys, the young guys, and just, um, you know, he spends a ton of time with the quarterbacks, but it, that's one of those positions uh, that when you start fresh uh, and in one case, when you have a player that's never called to play in the huddle or, uh, you know, period since high school, college, he's never had to get in the huddle and, and nail it down for the guys. So, uh, it takes a ton of time and Mike's got the patience to do that. And he did, I thought he did a tremendous job with those young guys to get them right. Uh, plus it, the more they know, the calmer they are. It doesn't matter who's around them. I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm not the, the secondary, I'm not the linebackers. And, and so, uh, get to know what you need to know and let, let's go. And then, um, you know, you know that, that's a blessed room right there. They've got some good, good coaches in there. Obviously Eric's in there every day and, um, you know, David Garrardi's in there too. So it works out well. They, they, there's plenty of coaching going on. All right, we've got two more. We'll go Pete and then Sam. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Coach, wanted to ask you about the fourth round defensive end, Joshua Kando. What gives you and the defensive staff optimism that he could potentially be a contributor in, in his rookie season here? Yeah, he, um, well, we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. But you got a great work ethic. I mean, tremendous work ethic. He's very, very intelligent. And um, he's long. I mean, he's, he's a big, he's a big human being. And, and he's got long arms and he knows how to use them. He's got heavy hands, they'd say. So, um, and then it's just a matter of him getting used to the scheme. Um, you know, he's got a tremendous coach and so, um, he'll, he'll get all the fundamentals down and, and then he'll take it step by step and eventually go use them. Um, like I mentioned about Yang, I mean, it, it's rough on the O line and D line right now because they, they can't hit anybody and, and do their thing. So it's a versus a bag. <clears throat> And we'll go last to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy. Um, what did I ask a follow up on on Lucas Niang? What just generally speaking, what what are sort of the concerns about a guy that hasn't played competitive football in a year? Like, what what specifically does Willie have to sort of catch up on because he wasn't actually in game action? Well, he actually came in better shape than he probably was last year. <laughs> you know, so that's a um, that that that's a plus. You know, he's been doing stuff, <clears throat> and and. Um, and so he came in and um, it looked like he got right back into it. Um, so I, for what we asked him to do, he was fine. He, he's a very intelligent kid. I think you guys know that, but he, he's very intelligent. So uh, just getting him back in the swing of things, I, I it looked like he did that well. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Okay, good. Thank you.